Hello, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if this is your first time coming by. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I am really, really excited to get into a deep dive of the Oracle deck that I've had for the longest in my whole collection and library of decks. It is the Tao Oracle by Ma Deva Padma. As I mentioned in my 90s Tarot Feels VR, uh, the Tao Oracle really set the bar for future Oracle decks for me and is probably single-handedly the reason why I am as picky as I am about Oracle decks and why I often find it much easier to declutter Oracle decks that don't fit certain criteria for me. This is the deck that really kicked it all off. So let's talk about the deck. I'm gonna be going doing a full deep dive walkthrough, but we're gonna talk about the structure of the deck and um, the sort of things that make it different and all of that good stuff, but I need to get some tools so that we're ready to go. Okay, I have some paper and a pen, which we will need as we go through this deck. And I also have my three coins. These are three pennies that live in the bag with my Dow Oracle. These are Canadian pennies, I think. I probably changed this out at different points in my life, but they are currently Canadian pennies. So we're gonna have those set to the side over here with the bag. Let's just put that up in the corner there. So we got our coins, pen and paper, the book and the deck. So before I get into the structure of the deck, actually, let's talk for a second about cardstock because this deck got it right way before it was popular. In fact, I think this was the only matte deck I encountered in the 90s um, or anywhere around that time. But it is a beautiful, buttery, smooth matte cardstock that today is wildly popular, but it's still quite bendy, which is wonderful. It's not really, really thick. It's probably like a three... It might be a three, no, it's probably like a 330 GSM cardstock, but it's really, really gorgeous. It shuffles beautifully. It doesn't stick, but mine's quite broken in. Um, I did edge this deck way after the 90s. I didn't start edging decks till like, I don't know, tarot tube happened, but um, it is edged and it's beautiful. So that's production stuff. Gorgeous, gorgeous shuffle, beautiful matte, the whole works. Um, and on the card itself, there's gonna be a bunch of things we're gonna talk about. So first thing you need to know about the Tao Oracle is that it is based on the whole system of the I Ching. So there's, it's really, really cleverly handled in this book and sort of how it breaks it down so that it's easy to work with. But the I Ching is what this is essentially, just in a card format. And I don't know how, <laughs> I mean, somebody who's much more familiar with I Ching, this is my exposure to I Ching right here for the most part. So this is where I've gotten any knowledge about the I Ching. If this is not accurate, I would have no way to know that. So just to own my crap right up front. But what they've done with the Tao Oracle, what Ma Deva Padma did, is there's the, each, each part of the I Ching is a hexagram made up of two trigrams, one over top of the other. And these are traditionally you would come up with your trigram by casting coins and depending on whether it's all heads or all tails you would have a different kind of line and that's how you would build your trigram and then you would do that twice and you'd have a hexagram and you'd build your your uh, I Ching hexagram from the bottom up right so what they've done here is they've got on every single card they have the actual two trigrams and combined that makes this hexagram and they've also come up with a symbolic system to represent each of the different trigrams something more visual so this trigram here, which is three solid lines, is heaven. And so they also have a circle to represent heaven. And on the back is this great key, the back of the guidebook rather, there's this great key that shows you. So you have this trigram is heaven, this trigram is thunder, then we have water, mountain, earth, wind or wood, uh, fire and lake. So you have these different symbols, but you have the trigram symbol and then this little like pictographic symbol. And this chart on the back um, is really cool because it shows you the color. Let me just zoom you in because it's probably gonna be the least amount of glare. So let's move the cards and I'll zoom you in. So this is, it's, I love that this was here. This is something that I refer to all the time, but you have a color for each of the trigrams, white, red, blue, green, black, this pale minty green, yellow and pink. And so you have each of the trigrams across the top and each of the trigrams down the bottom. And so it has a little thing here that says, this is for the upper trigram and this is for the lower. So if you've pulled, um, if you've done the coins, for example, you can go down and go, okay, this is my lower trigram and I've gotten wood, for example. And then let's say my upper trigram was earth. You go here up to earth and you literally just look for where the lines meet. And that would be card or card number 56 and that, or excuse me, 46, I can't speak. Card number 46. And then you could look up card number 46. So you you don't even actually have to work with the cards at all. Or you could find your your number this way, casting the coins, you could do it. And then you could go to this number and then pull that card and then work with that card. There are a number of ways you can work with this deck, but I just think that the flexibility of it is super freaking cool. So let's get into the guidebook because as you can see, it is a chunker. 
an illuminated new approach to the I Ching. And this was published in 1998. Um, and for Osho, Ma Deva Padma was a follower of Osho's teachings. So, I mean, there's a ton, right? You get a con, you get a, a listing in the table of contents for every single card, and then there's some great stuff in the beginning, which we're going to talk about. So there's some acknowledgments, a preface, and this is all good. I've read this book so many times. Um, a little bit about the cards, and this is going to is where we're going to talk about the structure of the card. And this is so great. I wish every guidebook for a unique system like this would do this. Um, also, for anybody horrified, I just bent the book back. I'm sorry. It's just the way I roll. Okay, so. Uh, I don't do that with everything, but this book I've had and it's been through the ringer, so I think I can. So let's zoom in. Actually, let's just zoom into the book page because there's an example right on the book page so you can see kind of how this deck is set up. So in the Tao Oracle card, so this is an example of card number 51, the arousing, which is thunder over thunder. So this is what it's going to tell you. At the lower right-hand corner, that's here, you have the traditional I Ching hexagram for the arousing, and it's made up of the arousing tri trigram repeated one above the other. So we have the arousing or the thunder trigram, trigram here. At the opposite corner, lower left, the Tao Oracle pictogram for the arousing is repeated, one lightning bolt over the other. So these are just different ways to say the same thing. At the top, and this is really cool, so you're going to see this as we go through the deck, there's this um, yin-yang symbol that features two colors. The top color is the color for the trigram up, up, up top, and the bottom color is also the color for the trigram below. So you have another visual representation of the energy of this particular um, hexagram. So it says here the pertinent colors assigned to the eight Tao oracle pictograms appear in the yin yang symbol, in this case red above, uh, red below. I mean we can't see the color because it's black and white, but you get the idea. And then we have the illustration depicting the heart of the oracle's message is central to each card. So you get the artwork, which is going to tell you more about what this, what this energy is like. And then you have beneath the illustration the number and the title of the card, 51, the arousing. And then you have keywords or phrases to complete the overall portrait. And this is what makes this such an incredibly usable system. And again, as I mentioned before, it's this that had this deck setting the bar for future oracles. And I think it's this is why I have such a hard time with decks that use titles but no keywords because I see no reason not to have both. And having multiple keywords excites me even more because there's different things you can jump into intuitively when you're working with the cards if you have multiple keywords as jumping off points. So next up is another really important part of this book. Let me zoom out so you can kind of see the whole thing. So I wish this was in color. It would be so much more useful. But this color image is also repeated on the front, and that's what I typically refer back to. But this shows you sort of the energy of the I Ching wheel that we're using here for the Tao Oracle, like the Tao Oracle's version of this thing. So we have the yin and yang symbol in the center representing duality, of course, and light and darkness, yin and yang, you know, active and passive, that sort of thing. And then we have um, the sequence of early heaven. So this is the uh, inner circle of symbols you see here on the card. And so we have the, the axis of the south. Now in this, north is at the bottom, south is at the top, east is to the left, and west is to the right. And there's a comment here. It says, in the Chinese tradition, south is south in the cardinal points appears at the top. So this is traditional, apparently. So then it says here, it tells you what each of the individual points on this inner circle represents. So this, 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 oh, I can't speak. <laughs> this circle over this square. So we have south is father, which is also heaven, to north, which is mother, which is also earth. So it says axis of south, father, to north, mother, heaven and earth. So we have heaven and earth in the inner circle. Then we have northeast to southwest. So we have northeast, to southwest, and here we have thunder, um, it says thunder, lightning, and wind are strengthening to each other, so it's telling you how the elements sort of interact with one another, right? So here we have northeast up here, this is the eldest son, so thunder is the eldest son to southwest, eldest daughter, thunder, lightning, and wind are strengthening. Then we have the axis of east to west, so we have east over here and west over here, and here we see the balance of water and fire balancing each other. And then we have the axis of northwest to southeast. So here we have north, oh my gosh, so bad to do backwards. Okay, northwest to southeast. So these two axis points here. And here we have mountain. Um, it says wind blows, how does it do this here? Wind blows from mountain to lake. Oh, right, wait, yeah. We have mountain and lake, but where's wind in this equivalent here? Wind is up here, so I'm not sure what it, this one confuses me. Clouds and mist rise from lake to mountain. Oh, it's talking about the relationship between lake and mountain. So we have the relationship between lake and mountain. We have the relationship between fire and water. 
father, uh, father and mother or heaven and earth rather. And then we have thunder and wind. So we've kind of looked at all these combinations of energies. So this is talking about the relationship to one another. Then you have the sequence of later heaven. This is the origin of sequential change. So here the sequence depicts the seasonal progression throughout a year, represents a cyclic pattern that is manifest in all of life in the way that each event is the cause of the one that follows it. This is so cool to me. So it talks about how all, I want to have this graphic still visible. All living things emerge in the sign of the arousing thunder. So that's here. In the sign of the arousing thunder, east, the season of spring. So that's coming up over here. The gentle wood slash wind follows. So wood, wind is this one. So wood, wind, southeast, early summer. The clinging, which is fire, is south and summer. The receptive, earth and soil, is southwest, early autumn. So it's talking about now the outer... It's talking about this outer ring. Okay, so we're going from here. That's the uh, outer part of the pattern here. So we're starting from thunder. This is probably easier to see, actually. Eh, we're going to go here. But it's this outer ring we're looking at. So we're starting from thunder, going to wood, wind, going to fire, which is summer. Then going to earth, which is the receptive. That's uh, early autumn. Then we're going into lake, which is west, harvest, or late, or late autumn. Then we go down to heaven, which is northwest, early winter. The abysmal, which is water, north and winter. And then we finish at keeping still, mountain, northeast, when the seeds of new life still rest in early spring. So this outer circle represents the seasonal movement of these different components, these different, um, this pattern of all of creation and all of life, and also how each one kind of initiates the next. Super, super fascinating stuff. Okay. The next thing that's really important to know about the formative way that this oracle works is a, a part of the oracle deck called Accessing the Changes, which we're going to talk about shortly. But I guess first, let's talk about this. This is a chart. I love me some charts. This has the entire correspondence list for each of the eight uh, symbols that make up, or eight trigrams that make up the I Ching system. So 64 is the uh, total combination you can get from eight of these symbols and how they mix with one another, right? So you can have each one over itself or over any of the other seven. So this has the full correspondences. So you get for every single trigram what it stands for, right? What its what its um, name is, its Chinese name, its attributes, its action, familial, developmental, animal, elemental, anatomical, seasonal, directional, and numerological association, which is super cool. And you can really go deep with this. I mean, I don't know that really we've had Oracle decks that quite go this far since this deck, but maybe that's just just me being um, biased. I don't know, but I've had this one for forever. So accessing the changes, this is really super interesting. So when I was talking earlier about how you can cast the I Ching, right? You decide, first of all, with your three coins or whatever you're going to use, you decide it, what's going to be heads and what's going to be tails. So if you have a set of, of objects with reverse sides like that, that's how you do that. Okay. The way, the way that I learned how to cast the I Ching is really, really simple. You have your three coins, you determine which side is heads, and you cast them focusing on your question. So with, this is just the basic way that I know, again, I'm not saying if it's correct or not, but this is the method I learned. Please double check uh, if you're looking to really get into traditional methods. But my method is this, uh, three heads is a yang line, okay? It's a yang line. So that's three heads. If I have heads majority, though, it's the opposite. It's a yin line. So that's two heads, one tail. If it's all three tails, that is a yin line as well. That's three tails. But if it's tails majority, and the third one is heads, that is again a yang line. So that is two tails, one head. So tails majority is, and just for clarity, a straight line is a yang line, and a dashed line is a yin line. Um, and that's just helpful for terminology so that you understand when you're reading about stuff. So if I wanted to cast a hexagram, I would build it from the bottom up, so I would focus on my question, what, what energy do I most need to focus on today? And I would cast my coins. So I have three heads. So my first line, and I'm gonna work from the bottom up, my first line is a, let me bring this over so you can still see the paper. My first line is going to be a yang line. So I'm gonna start, I need six lines. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. I, the numbering's stupid. It's just so I knew how many, how many lines I have. Okay, so starting at the bottom, I now have a yang line. Okay, so I'm still focusing on my question. What energy do I need to focus on today? And now I have heads majority. So now I have a yin line. Right? Same thing. What energy do I need to focus on today? Now I have a tails majority. And tails majority is a yang line. 
we're continuing to build. So this is my first trigram here. This is trigram one, bottom, trigram. Okay. So still focusing on my question. What energy do I need to focus on today? And I have a head majority. And head majority is a yin line. And what energy do I need to focus on today? I have a head majority again. And last cast, what energy do I need to focus on today? And I have two heads and a tail, so I have again a yin line. So this is top trigram. So now what I would do is I would just flip my book over <laughs> and come back here and build my symbol, build my build my hexagram. So I'm gonna show the pictogram version on the right and of course we have our regular one here. So this bottom trigram, it's a solid line and a dash line. So we have a yin line, a yang line, and a yin line, okay? So I'm looking for that on my chart and that is fire. So we have fire and the symbol for that is these three, okay, those are that's a bad drawing, but it's the three wavy lines. And then this top one, all three dashed lines, where are we? is earth. So we have earth over fire and earth's symbol is just a square in this deck. So that tells me what that is. So now I take my bottom trigram, which is fire. My top trigram is earth and we have card number 36. So that tells me what card I've just cast for myself. This is one method of working with this deck. And don't worry, we're still gonna do a full flip through, but I just wanted to give you the idea of how this would work. Cause the next thing I'm gonna do is show you how to access the changes. So. I work with card 36, because you can also shovel and sho shuffle and draw the normal way. Um, not shovel, shuffle. Okay, so card number 36 is right here, and it's called Darkening of the Light. Maintain a low profile, look inward first, caution and moderation, difficulties, self-protection, and subdue your brilliance. And you can take this deeper by thinking of the qualities of Earth weighing down on or being above the qualities of fire, right? There's an idea of dampening that fire. You get that idea of subduing, right? Of maintaining a low profile, not being so out there, right? You can really get it. And then you can, of course, look into the artwork as well. But now let's talk about the other aspect of this Oracle deck, which is accessing the changes. So to do that, I'm going to redraw my trigram a little bit lower down, or my hexagram rather. So I have a, I'm gonna do it smaller. So we have a little more room here. So boop, boop, boop boop, and then we have boop, 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 boop. Apparently the sound effects are helpful. Okay, so this is our original hexagram. We have lines one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so to access the changes, we're gonna cast right beside, for to, to rebuild a hexagram right beside it, and we're just looking for any lines that are changing. For this exercise, and it's described in the book here on page, I always have it dog-eared, because I always forget, page 35. So it tells you how to determine whether your lines have changed or not. For this, we're only looking at all three heads or all three tails. So to find out if there are any changes, and what, why we're doing this is because this is what my message is to focus on this for the day. The changes indicate how, what I have opportunity to change, like how I could maybe come through this a little di differently. If none of, if nothing changes, then this message is very static and it's, it is what it is. But the changes give me an opportunity to see how I can affect that outcome. Okay. So I have, to, I have to reread this every single time because it's always a little confusing for me, but here's how accessing the changes works. You're going to cast again, and this time when you cast, you're going to be looking to see if you pull either three heads or three tails. If you get three heads, right, which is a yang line, then it matches and you actually change your corresponding line to its opposite. Bring this up. So my bottom line right here is a yang line, it's straight. So that was three heads. If I cast, for this line, and I get three heads again, this changes to a yin line, and I do that all the way up. We're only paying attention to all three heads or all three tails. Any combination of majority heads or majority tails, we disregard and the line doesn't change. But if I cast the same thing that was originally cast, it becomes its opposite. I know that sounds a little confusing, but it's super fun to do, so we're just gonna get into it. So again, I'm focusing on how, what energy I need to focus on today. I'm still sort of holding that question in my mind, but now I'm looking to access any changes. Like perhaps I can unblock that fire a little bit. Let's find out. All right, so I have heads majority, so the line doesn't change. Let's make sure this is still visible. The line doesn't change, so I copy it over again exactly as it was before, as a yang line. All right, the next line up, I have a majority, so nothing changes. Still a yin line. Third one. 
still a majority. We have two heads and one tail. I guess I should be calling it out because you probably can't see with the light, but I still have a yang line. So we're only making a change if I get a dominant, three heads or three tails. Same thing here, we have two heads and a tail, nothing changes. So now we're on to the fourth lineup. So I'm on my top trigram and I'm still on a yin line. And then two more times. Where did it go? There it is. Ah, we have three tails and the original one was also three tails. So this line changes and now becomes a yang line. It was a yin line, but because I cast the same thing, it now becomes its opposite. And we have one more. So our, our trigram has changed a little. Let's see what it changes to. Last throw. We have three tails again, and that was also three tails. So this has changed a lot actually. So now our top trigram, which is these, let me bring this over here. Our top trigram, which is these three lines here has become something new. Our bottom one is still fire. So we still have fire. And let's see what's on top of fire now. So now we have two solid lines and a dash line. And that is, I believe, not mountain, what is it, lake? Nope, it's wind wood, wood wind. Uh, so we have the really pretty spiral over top. So now when I consult the back of the book chart, we have fire as our bottom still, and we have wood as our top, and we go to card 37, which ironically is the very next card in the deck. So let's grab 37. And this is the change. We go from, oh, this is so interesting. It literally flips from earth over fire to fire over earth. So interesting. So we go from darkening of the light to progress. This is about advancement, gaining recognition, appreciation, achievements, acceleration, steady gains, and increased clarity. So the way that you get the benefit out of this accessing the changes practice is then you go to your guidebook. And this is so cool. So you go to your guidebook. First, we're going to look up card number 36. And here's where you can also dig into the meat of your message if you like, or we can just go right to accessing the changes. But let me show you how the guidebook is set up for each card and then we'll, we'll do that. And I know this video is gonna be 8 million hours long, but we don't care because that's what a deep dive is. Okay, so darkening of the light is here. You get two full pages for every um, card, which is excellent. So this goes into great detail about the message. It gives you a lot of advice about this energy, which I will definitely be reading later since I ended up doing this poll for myself knocked my camera, but to access the changes, we flip over. So this is, you read the lines that change for the hexagram you ended up building. So our top two lines changed. So that is line five right here and our top line, line six. So line five, so in order to access the changes, this is my advice, contemplate the moon. Its radiance is light reflected. It functions like a mirror without identifying with darkness or with light. Its presence is a reminder of the beauty of neutrality, resting comfortably in the middle. Avoid getting caught up with extremes. Remaining aloof and detached is what is called for now. So that is the, the changes for line five. So that's, to me, that feels like the advice. Okay, if I want to get to card, my, my changed hexagram, if I, if I want to get here, to get here, this is what I need to focus on, right? Remain aloof and detached. And then my top line, which also changed, says, whatever you've been enduring has already reached a crescendo. Be grateful that the darkest hour already, ha ah, let me try that again. Whatever you've been enduring has already reached a crescendo. Be grateful that the darkest hour always heralds the dawn and it doesn't get darker than this. So lay low and wait. Relief is just below the horizon. So heeding that advice, I can now access my second card, the progress card. Yo, I did this wrong, you guys. 37 is here. <laughs> Let's pretend, okay, that I didn't already mess that all up. Okay, so I'm actually going to card 37, right? Wasn't that what we figured out? Yeah, card 37, I pulled the wrong one. Okay, so this is our, this is the new card. So now we go to the next card, to the new card. Sometimes it's gonna be further on in the deck. It just happened to work out that we went on to the very next card. So now we're moving into the family. So this is what I would be changing into. So then I would read my Oracle message for family, but let's just, for the sake of brevity, look at just the card. So we have the family and talk, it's wood, wind over fire. And it says heredity, blood bonds, kindred spirits, ancestry, home life, community, intimate relationships, and our human family. So here's how I'm reading this spread using this kind of full method. And I don't always use the deck this way, but when I do, it's really cool like this. But if I were to use this according to the full method, I would have taken in the message for this card, which I've done here, uh, maintain a low profile, let's not get riled up, all of that. And if I heed the advice and the changed lines, I then can end up here with the family, which to me is about deepening relationships and bonds. So I feel like if I heed this, if I do keep the low profile, if I stay away from extremes, if I I 
don't, you know, let myself get really weighed down. If I think about reflecting on the moon as a mirror and really consider what that means, I can end up here with this deepened relationship, these deepened bonds with the people close to me. So I feel like I'm going to benefit in my relationships if I heed this advice. So really, really powerful reading. And it's a very interactive um, reading that just involves a lot of steps, which could be really unappealing. But it can also be really appealing if you really enjoy things that just have a lot of depth. And these messages in the guidebook are wonderful. Amazing, amazing, amazing Oracle deck. So yeah, you can work with it in a number of ways. Like I said, you can shuffle and draw your cards tr like you would traditionally draw. And you can work with large spreads. You can work with small spreads. I've done this, use this deck all kinds of ways. But you can draw and use it like any other Oracle deck. You can access the changes or not. That's a totally optional process, but I always keep my coins in my pouch. Um, and you can either cast to build your trigram and figure or your hexagram and then find out which card you're working with. And you, you can do it that way, which is a really cool, like hands-on way to do it or you can just shuffle and draw normally, right? So you have all these options for how you can work with it, but I think it's just really, really awesome. So with all that said, let's actually get into the deep dive of the artwork itself and the cards and all that good stuff. So we begin with the creative. This is the active yang principle, strength, tenacity, dynamism, inspiration, heaven, masculinity, authority, and father. So we see here we have yang over yang or heaven over heaven here. The receptive. And I mean, and look at these cards next to each other. This is the active um, father principle, the active yang principle, that sort of what we often call like masculinity, right? Here we would have its opposite, right? So we move from the yang energy to the yin energy. And in card two, we have the receptive. So we go from the creative to the receptive. And this is the Again, the harmony or the opposite to that. The yielding yin principle. Yielding is a beautiful word for yin, actually. Devoted, patient, supportive, obedient, responsive, intuitive, earthy, and mother. Um, some of us might bristle at some of those uh, words, particularly obedient for some, but just it's, you know, it, it is a product of the energy, right? Then we have difficulty in the beginning, card three. Growing pains, doubts, and fears, awkwardness, becoming stronger, vulnerability, and inexperience. And we have this creature, this human breaking out of an egg. It's a, such a potent image for that energy, much as this um, really soft sort of belly and breast of this fem feminine principle with this lotus here. It's just, I mean, the artwork is stunning in this deck. Youthful folly is card four. This is mountain over water. Impulsiveness, immaturity, bluffing, ignorance, learning impatience, and reckless behavior. This feels like a very fool energy kind of card, does it not? And in that way, this whole deck feels so balanced. It feels like it operates exactly like a tarot would operate to me. Um, I don't feel like there's anything lacking. It, the energy, again, feels balanced. It's it's from a system that is inherent, inherently balanced. I mean, it's just, it's wonderful. Anyway, so here we have waiting. I love this artwork. I love the idea of waiting for the, the babe to be born, waiting for that right time. Here it says perseverance, take care of essentials, restraint, leave well enough alone, moderation, and right timing. I mean, the stars and the clouds through her. I mean, it's just, oh, it's gorgeous. Here we have conflict. And this is wonderful, right? We have this rigidity, these, these creatures that are made out of stone, literally bashing foreheads. Did you ever do this when you were a kid, the forehead fight thing? Like, Literally, that is the image of stubbornness, and they're creating all this flame and friction and 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 all of that with that behavior. Will to power, not willpower, will to power, which is so interesting. Hostility, jealousy, stubbornness, aggression, fear, competitiveness, and controversy. But that image feels like it's keywords, you know? Here we have discipline. Exert authority, define. It's time to take the bull by the horns, create a strategy, and mobilize forces. Yes. Holding together. Look at the school of fish. I mean, they do act as a team, right? Union, cooperation, solidarity, membership, teamwork, participation, making a choice. The Taming Power of the Small. Some of these titles are so gorgeous. And I believe that these are the actual names of these I Ching hexagrams. I think that's what, what, what these are based on. Um, and then we have our keywords. But I, I just love this. The Taming Power of the Small. Self-restraint, self-sufficiency, careful preparations, resourcefulness, minor impediments, and adaptability treading. This is so gorgeous. Uh, conduct, self-awareness, proceed with caution and sensitivity, correct behavior and act responsibly. This is heaven over lake. And you can see heaven over lake visually depicted here, just like you can see wood or wind over heaven. 
right? Can't you? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's in my mind. Here we have water over earth and we have the fish. It's, it's very intentional. Every choice in the artwork is very intentional. Here we have earth over water. I mean, it's just, if you really sit with each one and you consider even what each trigram represents and then you sit with the whole message, it just, there's so much depth. Here we have peace, harmony, balance, perfection, equipoise, a sense of well-being, favorable conditions, and expansion. This is earth over heaven. How stunning is that? Stand still, alienation, a stalemate, stagnation, withholding, grinding to a halt, insensitivity and mistrust. Now here we have heaven over earth, which is super interesting because we want to see these almost in reverse because heaven sort of supports the creation and the manifestation in a way. But here, heaven is oppressing down onto earth, right? So we're not able to get anywhere. We're not able to, to evolve. But this is, it's the yin-yang, but it's, in, it's, it's opposite the shape that it should be, if that makes any sense. Companionship, here we have heaven over fire. Friendliness, mutual respect, shared goals, interdependence, agreement, and strengthening bonds. Prosperity is fire over heaven, right? Very manifest, potent energy. Wealth, good fortune, success, express gratitude by supporting others and material possessions. Modesty, this is earth over mountain. So it's got a, um, a stability and a groundedness and a heaviness to it. So moderation, humility, keep it simple, lack of pretension, self-respect, sincerity, and respectability. Now we have thunder over earth, self-expression, inspire, sorry, enthusiasm is the key word, self-expression, inspiring others, self-confidence, totality, success, sharing, a positive response. I mean, I just could get lost. And the keywords just give you so much to go off of. Here we have following. We have lake over thunder, loyalty, adaptability, cooperation, trust, reliability, sensitivity to others, service, and receiving guidance. Work on what has been spoiled, mountain over woodwind, healing, Correct past mistakes, make repairs, clean up corruption, restore balance, responsible action. And here we have somebody planting a tree, but there's all this, there's all this gathered tree and antlers. Is it antlers? It looks like antlers to me. It might just be all tree branches, but it's all been gathered. And so a new tree is, is being planted. Approach, earth over lake, advancing, a warm reception, prosperous conditions, increased influence, hopefulness, lightening up on arrival, or excuse me, on arrival. Contemplation, card 20, woodwind over earth, gaining overview, detached observation, increased understanding, solitude, integration through reflection. Biting through, so powerful. These are very dynamic energies. These are both um, yang energies. We have fire over thunder. So it's very, very dynamic and powerful. Take decisive action, restore order, force applied with sensitivity, justice, and tenacious devotion to a task. For grace, we have mountain over fire. It's so beautiful with all these lotuses. It's gorgeous. Adornment, bring out beauty, elegance, the outer as a reflection of the inner, vanity, charisma, and self-expression. Mountain over earth, splitting apart, impermanence, collapse, deterioration, separation, let go, surrender, eliminate the old, and death. The turning point, earth over thunder, Return, the start of a new cycle, right timing, regeneration, inevitability, and steady improvements. Innocence, a trusting nature, originality, spontaneity, open-heartedness, simplicity, and the unexpected. I love how this uh, lotus blossom with the child coming out of it is right at the third eye space. This is heaven over thunder. Mountain over heaven, the taming power of the great. So this is the um, I'm probably the reverse, actually, to the taming power of the small. Let's just take a look. Where was that? I think it was before that. Let's just see. I'm super curious now because, of course, I don't often sit with this. Yeah. Oh, no, it's different. It's this one. Okay, so this one was wood wind over heaven. This is mountain over heaven. So it's like a stronger, bigger energy, um, more, more solid. Interesting. Okay. So here we have self-discipline, concentration, strengthen your character from within, self-awareness, and realizing potential. This is always so pretty to me. The Corners of the Mouth. So The Corners of the Mouth is such an interesting title. If this is Mountain Over Thunder. The Corners of the Mouth, to me, it's like about softening. Um, there's a, there's a, uh, an ease in that. That's the space where we might smile a little or frown a little. But there's this softness and subtlety to it. Anyway, I don't know. That's just my impressions. But here we have nourishment, health, well-being, providing for others, creating balance, nurturing the body, mind, and spirit. Lake over wood or lake over wind, excess, stress, overload, exhaustion, obsessiveness, gluttony, burdens, worries, the breaking point. 
very Ten of wands -y energy. It's identical, really. And this is what's so interesting to me is when you think about the I Ching as a system and tarot as a system, they're very, I feel like there's a lot of, lot of correlation because we're still looking at the same life archetypes, right, across both systems. The abysmal, this is water over water. Danger, insecurity, overwhelm. So it's this rush of, of water, right? Unpredictability, hazardous conditions, dark emotions, facing fear and courage. Here we have fire over fire, the clinging. Fire, illumination, inspiration, devotion, and all-consuming passion. Regeneration, spirituality, virtue, and enlightenment. And she's literally lit on flame. Influence. This is so beautiful. And the colors are identical to what we see up here, right? We have lake over mountain, but they're harmonized together because these are an original pair, right? Much like, so we have these original pairs from the inner circle. So heaven and earth, right, were a pair. And mountain and lake were a pair. So they're harmonized here with lake over mountain. So we have courtship. Uh, the word was influence. Courtship, mutual attraction, genuine affection, natural magnetism, stimulation, and connecting. Duration. This is thunder over wood, wind. Constancy, continu continuity, endurance, perseverance, maturity, strengthening, stability, a deep commitment. Heaven over mountain, retreat, a timely departure, letting go, withdrawal, revaluation, retirement, don't hesitate to walk away. I mean, uh, the geese flying south for the winter, right? Great power, this is thunder over heaven, so it's very big, right? This is strength of character, authority, dignity, influence, self-confidence, leadership, peak condition, and potency. Here we have fire over earth, progress, advancement, gaining recognition, appreciation, achievements, acceleration, steady gains, and increased clarity. Here somebody looks like they're dancing, right? They're really in their passion and they're making progress in their field. And we went, looked at darkening of the light, right? Beautiful, earth over, excuse me, earth over fire. And then of course we had wood, wind over fire as well. This is heredity, blood bonds, kindred spirits. We looked at this one as well. Here we have opposition. This is fire over lake. Opposite viewpoints, personal differences, a communication gap, disharmony, misunderstandings, and, and estrangement. Here we have obstacles. This is water over mountain, unexpected obstructions, frustration, difficulties, feelings of hopelessness, struggle, and discouragement. And we have this ship at a in a stormy sea, right? It's very indicative of the energy of the card. Here we have deliverance, release, relief, a fresh approach, liberation from obstruction, finding a solution, and exhilaration. Um, this is really interesting because it looks like somebody who was really praying for rain, for example, and it comes and there's just this feeling of like, yes, this is what we were waiting for. Dear, de I was like, what does that say? For a second, I couldn't read it. Decre decrease, uh, mountain over lake, decline, cutting back, frugality, contraction, letting go, less is more, resourcefulness, a sacrifice. I love the crescent moon up here, which is of course waning, which is beautiful. Increase. Oh, I wish we had the waxing moon. That'd be super cool. Um, so we have sharing, reaping rewards, overflow, expansion, flowering, encouragement, fertile ground, and abundance. And this is wood, wind over thunder. Did I talk about this one? Yeah, mountain over lake. Lake over heaven. We have resoluteness, determination, no compromises, unwavering focus, inner resolve, integrity, a test of character, self-examination. The attraction of opposites, seduction, temptation, magnetism, a passionate encounter, meeting halfway, coupling, and sexual union. So here we have heaven over wood, wind. That's interesting. I just noticed that this, the cut on this deck is obviously a bit uneven because we have, if I hold these next to each other, the artwork sits much lower on this card. And so our bottom line there is just touching the bottom. I did consider at one point trying to figure out if there's a way to trim it, but there's no way without getting rid of this information at the bottom, just the way that it's laid out. So anyway, lake over mountain, or excuse me, lake over earth, we have gathering together, massing, converging, unifying. I love all these little streams coming together into a big one for this. Assembling, com combining forces, the sum is greater than the parts. I mean, that's a perfect image for that. Pushing upward the fruiting of the mushroom. Here we have earth over wood, wind, steady progress, gaining confidence, accepting challenges, a promotion and receiving recognition. I mean, when we think about how much is happening under the surface before that mushroom comes up, right? Same idea. Oppression. This is lake over water. Restriction, exhaustion, depression, depleted resources, feeling cut off, punishment and confinement. The well. 
I just love this so much. It's literally as if she's diving down a, a well. Like these are the stone walls. This is the water. She's just diving down into it. This is water over wood wind. Seeking truth, wisdom, insight, intuitive knowing, return to the source, getting to the bottom of things. Revolution, lake over fire. Look at how dynamic this is. Transformation, a radical change. Give up the old to make way for the new, a quantum leap. The cauldron, this is fire over wood wind. Inner alchemy, mastery, spiritual renewal, consecrate, contain, rejuvenation, and discerning wisdom. The arousing, thunder over thunder. Shock, a crisis, upheaval, awe-inspiring, dramatic power shifts, unpredictability, a shake-up that's a wake-up. This is such tower energy. Keeping still, we have mountain over mountain. Meditation, self-renewal, composure, detachment, self-acceptance, equanimity, and serenity. Development, we have woodwind over mountain. Gradual progress, continuity. This is very wheel, is it not? Slowly but surely, adaptability, a time-honored approach. So pretty. Look at the bondage here. The marrying maiden, thunder over lake. Listen to this. A compromising situation, subordination, succumbing to seduction, manipulation, and low self-esteem. This is somebody who's been caught in a bit of a trap, right? This is very, very different than that the choice element of partnering up, right? So it's really strong message here. Abundance, we have thunder over fire, plenty, profusion, generosity, fertility, ripeness, inner riches, reaping rewards, culmination, and harvest. The wanderer, traveling, adventure, movement, coping with unfamiliarity, a pilgrimage, aloneness, that's a card that also exists in the Osho Zantero, broaden your horizons. This is fire over mountain. The gentle, here we have wood wind over wood wind penetrating, a soft approach, faith, moderation, a subtle but deep influence, understanding, and non-violence. Look at how gorgeous this is, the, joy, the joyous. This is lake over lake. Happiness, delight, interaction, open communication, goodwill, friendly persuasion, and self-expression. Dispersion. This is wood, wind over water. Look at the, the energy here diffuse negativity it literally feels almost like a shake of a rattle or something like it's breaking up that energy anyway diffuse negativity restore harmony circulate revitalize dissolve divisions and lighten up limitation water over lake self-discipline practice self-respect introspection ritual cultivate patience build up energy and maturity wood wind here's another one that's set low look at that wood wind over lake the wisdom of the heart, this is inner truth, the wisdom of the heart, insight, clarity, purity, intuitive knowing, consciousness, penetrating illusion. I think in a lot of ways, getting to know this deck is what made the Osho Zen really truly feel like Ma Deva Padma's deck. It's never felt to me like Osho's deck. I feel like all of Ma Deva Padma's energy and, and insight is what's really the heart of the Osho Zen tarot because I see so much of what became, I think, I think this is this was obviously her personal project, right? But I feel like this is sort of, if you're looking for it, it lies beneath the Osho Zentero. Anyway, okay. Small is beautiful. We have thunder over mountain. Find the extraordinary in the ordinary. Keep it simple. Use discretion. Slow down. Tend to details and pay attention. The little butterfly there is great. This is the, I think, I'm pretty sure this is like the most modern card in the deck and it always throws me a little bit when I pull it, but it's, it's a great image. Completion. Final attainment. Victory. A crescendo. A job well done. Perfection peak performance, prudence, and this is water over fire. Finally, before completion, this is fire over water. Here we have um, ice that's cracking underfoot. So we have uncertainty, doubt and hesitation, loss of faith, unstable conditions, be extra cautious, and discord. And that is all 64 cards of the Tao Oracle. So I'm going to give it a shuffle. I, I hope the cardstock is the same now as it was when I got this deck so many years ago. Um, but it's really, really wonderful matte cardstock. It's held up so well. It's been shuffled hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, I've never had an issue with it. It feels kind of buttery. This reminds me a lot actually of Taroko Studios cardstock. In fact, if I were to guess, it feels pretty identical actually. So if you know Taroko Studios cardstock, this feels the same. And this was out back in the 90s. There's so many things that this deck gets right. As an early um, Oracle deck for that time period, this is just incredible. And I think this, again, this deck is why I feel like I'm so hard on Oracle decks now. Because it just 
how can you, if you could do this 30 years ago, I guess it's not 30 years ago, let's not age myself, 20 years ago, right? 90s, mid 90s, wait. Is that 30? Hold on. If it's 2022, then 2012 would be 10 years ago. 2002 would be 20 years ago. 92 would be 30. So we're almost 30 years old. Okay, well, whatever. We're not going to talk about that. Um, this deck itself is not that old, obviously. I had it. I got it in the late 90s. Um, but it's still, I mean, like, it's old. <laughs> but, like, I feel like if you could do this good and be, put this much thought into a system, into an Oracle deck, and, I mean, I get that it's helped by the fact that it's based on an existing um, divination tradition that goes back much, much, much further than the 90s. But... You know, so much thought and care and heart and soul went into this deck, and I never hear anybody talk about it. And it remains, like, if I had to declutter my Oracle deck collection down to, say, three or four, this would 100% make the cut. It would absolutely make the cut. And perhaps that's what I should do, is do a top five Oracle decks of all time video or something like that, because this is just, this is just. And how do I... Yeah, I'm not going to feel guilty about the fact that I'm hard on Oracle decks because this one's so good. And if I have one that's so balanced and so good and can be used exactly like a tarot and can give me the same depth as a tarot, um, sometimes it feels like maybe even more depending on the mood and the context. Like if I, if I have that, why would I compromise for something that's just light and fluffy and doesn't have any substance to it when I've got something with so much depth and substance? And I think the thing is, is that when we're create something you know we as the creator probably feel all that depth and substance but it has to translate and I just feel like this job did, this deck did such an incredible job of translating that depth of getting it through in the final product and that's just incredible and just the fact that I can I can cast and then draw I can shuffle and draw and then access the changes I can ignore accessing the changes and just read my message I've used this deck so, so many different ways, and it's just an absolute treasure. And the fact that it's still in print, I think, is a testament to its quality, but it's it's wonderful. And if you've bought this deck in the last few years, I would love to hear if the cardstock and the book and everything is the same. Like, did this ever come out in color? I'd love to know. Um, is the cardstock still buttery and wonderful and delicious and amazing? Um, what was your experience like with it? I mean, I would just love to know because I can't be the only one that loves and appreciates this incredible deck. But I hope that this gave you a glimpse into it. And if this is one that you've been considering at any point, I hope that you will because I've. this is one of those things I don't think, it, I think it would be very difficult to regret this purchase because it's incredibly affordable and it's so full of depth and wisdom and there's so much you can learn from it. And it's got such a heavy emphasis on personal growth and responsibility, which is of course how I like to work with the tarot. So anyways, I'm gonna stop gushing and babbling because I've been here for a while now and I still need to edit this video and make sure that you guys get to see it at the in the end. But thank you so much for coming with me on this journey. I would, again, love to hear what you think. So please do comment down below and let me know your thoughts. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. An extra huge, humongous, a special, special thank you to the Unicorn fam. Thank you guys so much for joining up and becoming a part of my membership program because the membership on YouTube really helps to support what I do here and it's a wonderful way for me to interact with you guys and I just appreciate it so much and I appreciate all of you. And for all of you watching this video, thank you. Thank you for spending time with me, especially on such a long video. Thank you for spending time with me here. It's what makes this fun for me to do. I know I say it all the time, but I just, I never want to lose sight of my gratitude for this experience and for how it nourishes me and makes me feel really seen and really good. So thank you for that and thank Thank you for all of your likes and subscribes and comments and, and clicking of the bells and all the things that you do just to help support what I do. It means more than you possibly could know. So thank you all so, so much. And may your magic always shine from the inside out. Bye.